Hey guys, I'm Alphonse. Welcome to the 16th episode of Anybody Can Code C Programming series. If you'd like to take a look at the previous episodes, please use the link in the description. In today's episode, we'll be looking at scope of variables in C. First, let's understand the terms scope and lifetime. The scope of a variable is the part of the program within which that variable is accessible. The lifetime of a variable is the time duration for which a memory is allocated for that variable and when that memory is released. First, let's look at the local scope of a variable. Local scope is also called as block scope. A block begins with an opening brace and ends with a closing brace. A block can contain another block within it. The variables of the outer block are accessible in the inner block. The variables in the inner block is not accessible in the outer block. The scope and the lifetime of the local variables is only within the block in which they are defined. The local variables are not automatically initialized by the compiler. Now, let's write a program to better understand the working of a local scope of a variable. Here, we are given a program to find the factorial of a number. So, let's write a program that calculates the factorial of a number. I'm declaring two variables, n and fact. And I'm having a for loop to calculate the factorial of a number. But instead of initializing the value of i outside the for loop, I'm initializing it within the for loop. So when I try to access the value of i outside the for loop, it will throw us an error. So let's go ahead and write the logic to calculate the factorial of a number. Let's get the input from the user. And let's print the factorial. Now let's go ahead and run a program. So let's enter the number as 5. And we can see that the factorial of the number is being calculated. So let me try to access the value of i outside the for loop to see if the value of i is being printed. So let's run the program. So when we try to run the program, it, it is telling us that i is undeclared, which tells us that i is only accessible within the for loop and it cannot be accessed outside the for loop in which it is not defined. So let's look at another program to understand the working of the, of the local scope of a variable in a function. So here we are given a program to find the area of a circle. So I'm create, I'm declaring a variable rad and I'm getting the radius from the user. So now let's write a function to find the area of a circle. So 
the area of the circle would be returning a value that is of type float and I'm calling this function circle area and we are passing an argument to it which is the radius. I'm declaring a pi variable which holds the value 3.14 and we are returning the calculation pi into r into r. So let's write the calling statement. with radius and here we are passing the radius. Let's go ahead and run this program. So let's give the radius as 2.5 and we can see that the area of the circle is being calculated. Suppose I'm trying to calculate the area of the sorry the circumference of the circle directly. So I'm trying to directly calculate it. Here I have used the variable pi which is which cannot be accessed because the variable pi is can only be accessed within the function circle area and it cannot be accessed within the main function which tells us the variables that are declared inside a function can be accessed only within the function and it cannot be accessed from another function or from any other block. Next, let's look at global variables. The lifetime and scope of a global variable is throughout the program, which means the global variable is accessible anywhere in the program. Global variables are usually declared at the start of the program after the header files. So let's look at a program to understand the working of global variables. So let's take the same example. So we stopped at writing the logic to find the circumference of the circle. Since I had mentioned that we cannot use the variable pi here, it is redundant to have the variable pi here. So what do we do now? We can declare the variable pi outside the function circle area. Let's do that. Now, let's go ahead and run the program to see if both the area and the circle of the, both the area and the circumference of the circle is being calculated or not. I'm giving the radius as 5.4 and you can see both the area and the circumference of the circle are being calculated. So when the variable pi is used within a function, it we were not able to access it from the main function. But when we declare it as a global variable, we can use it anywhere in the program. So pre previously I had mentioned that local variables are not automatically initialized by the compiler. But in the case of global variables, it is, it is automatically initialized to zero by default. Sometimes there are cases when both the local variable and global variables have the same name. So what happens at that time? 
So when a local variable and a global variable have the same name, the local variable takes precedence over the global variable. So let's look at a small example to, to understand that. So here we are declaring a global variable. And here I have a local variable to the main function. So I'm trying to print the value of A. So let's go ahead and run the program. We can see that the value that is in the local variable is taking precedence over the global variable. Let's write, have a function to see if that is the true case. So here we are not declaring any variable, we're just printing the value of A. Let's go ahead and run a program. So we can see that within the main function, the local variable is taking precedence. We can see that within the, we can see that within the main function, the value that is phi is taking precedence over the global variable value 10. But in the function func, the value that is in the global variable is printed, which tells us that a global variable does not take precedence over a local variable. Next, let's look at static variables. Static variables retain their previous value even when they go out of scope and are not reinitialized every time. Their lifetime is throughout the program, so the memory is allocated only once and it is not reallocated every time. So let's write a program and I'll be explaining the properties of static variables in that program. So here I'm interested in writing a program to find how many times a function is called using static variables. So first let's write a function. This function will not be returning in any value nor will it be accepting any arguments. Static variables are declared using the st uh, keyword static in front of the data type. I'm printing a message here to determine the number of times the function is called. And I'm having a for loop to call the function a certain number of times. So here the first method is with initialization. So here I'm initializing the value of count to one. Now let's go ahead and run the program. So here the function is called four times and the static variable is only initialized once and it is not reinitialized every time the function goes out of scope. And so we can see that the 
count variable is incremented gradually first time it is it displays one second time it is two and third time it's three and fourth time it is four so next let's see how a static variable behaves if we do not initialize it with any value now let's go ahead and run the program so we can see that if we do not initialize a static variable with any value by default it will take the value of 0 and it will start incrementing from that so here the first value of count happens to be 0 and it gradually increments to 1 2 and 3 static variables can also be global variables so i'm going to declare this static int count which is the static variable outside the function and let's go ahead and run the program so we can see that we we removed the static variable from the function and we declared it as a global variable and it is still giving us the same output so global variables by default they are automatically initialized by the compiler if we do not initialize them so and static variables also are automatically initialized by the compiler to zero if we do not initialize it with a value next let's look at the initialization of static variables using constant literals so static variables can only be initialized using constant literals let's see what that means so here I'm creating a static variable pi and let's see if it can hold a value that is being returned from a function. So I'm going to create a function called pi value which will return the value of pi. and let's print the value of pi let's go ahead and run the program so here we are getting a error message saying that initialize initializer element is not a constant which tells us that static variables can only be initialized using const literals so let's modify this program so that it does not throw any error so let's assign the value of pi in the next statement and this time it is running fine with this we come to the end of this video in the next episode we'll be looking at the basics of pointers in c so stay tuned hey youtube how are you doing stay tuned to facebook for more awesome videos don't forget to subscribe